Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, I received an email from someone asking me if I could do a video on Color Effects Pro 4. That's what we're going to be doing today. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Color Effects Pro 4, it is part of the Nick Collection. The Nick Collection is a set of plugins, and it's been around a long, long time. A few years ago, it was purchased by DxO, and DxO has been updating and upgrading it since. They have a fully working free trial. In the description below this video, I'll have links to it. You could check it out. Uh, I also have a discount code. If you decide to purchase it, use my discount code, and you could save a few dollars. Now, as far as Color Effects Pro 4, and really all of the Nick Collection, or most of the Nick Collection, I should say, it works as a plugin in Photoshop Lightroom and DxO's own PhotoLab 4. We're going to be using it as a Lightroom plugin today, and we're going to be working on this image. This is a raw file, and all I've done to it is I moved four sliders, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. You can see I haven't done anything with presence. I haven't gone down to this HSL tab. I haven't done anything, really, except for those four sliders. Here's before and after. Here's before and there's after. Now it really doesn't matter how much you work on your raw file before you send it in to Color Effects Pro 4. It's really up to you. I just wanted to do those tone adjustments for this image. So I'm ready to send it to Color Effects Pro 4. I'm simply going to right click on the image, go down to Edit In, and then we'll go down to Color Effects Pro 4. You'll come up with a dialog box. Lightroom needs to create a TIFF file that will work in Color Effects Pro 4 because this was a raw file. So I'm going to use TIFF Pro Photo RGB 16 bits per component and resolution at 360. I just have that there because I use an Epson printer and Epson recommends that you should work with resolutions of 360 throughout your workflow. And that's what I'm doing. So we'll click at it. Now Lightroom will create this TIFF file and it will open up in Color Effects Pro 4. You may be wondering, well, what is Color Effects Pro 4? What's it do? Well, for those of you that might be familiar with older versions of Luminar, I'm talking about like Luminar 2 and Luminar 3, that had filters that you applied to an image. This is similar. Uh, it has a bunch of filters. And you can see over on the left-hand side, it says Filter Library. And a long time ago, I counted these. And if I remember, it was like 50 or 55 of these. And as I mentioned, DxO recently purchased, or a few years ago purchased, the Nick collection, and they've been updating and upgrading this as uh, the years go by. Now you have all these filters and you apply filters uh, to the image and number of filters, one on top of the other. And what it does is it remembers your last filters used. So when you open a new image into it, it will automatically add those uh, to the image. So if you often add the same couple, three, four filters or whatever, and then when you open the image in, uh, Color Effects Pro 4, it will automatically add them. So hopefully that would save you some time. Now, the last time I was in Color Effects Pro 4, all I did was add one filter, the Detail Extractor. And I'll give you a before after. There's before. So this was the image in Lightroom, basically. And then when you add this single Detail Extractor filter, you could see how it really added detail and added a lot of tonal contrast uh, throughout the image. So just that one filter. Now each filter has its own uh, set of sliders and settings uh, that you could use. So the effect radius, like here we could go to fine and you just hover over the settings in the drop down, and you'll get a preview of what it would look like. Large, like I'll leave it at normal. And then you have different sliders, the detail slider, contrast slider, saturation slider, and so on. And for those of you that are familiar with the Nick collection, you know that um, one of the important features of it are control points. And most of the filters will have control points as well. So you could just apply the filter to a very specific part of the image with the control points. Now in this case, I'm just going to let that stay on there and I'm going to let it be applied to the entire image. Now if you want to add another filter, you just can't go over here and pick a filter because it will replace the existing filter with other whatever filter you add. So what you need to do is you have to really physically click this button, add filter, so that you're adding an empty filter. Now when you go over here, you could add a, a filter 
to this empty filter placeholder. And let's see if we could find one. Um, let's see. There was something I wanted to... There's, a, there's so many here, but let's go with foliage, all right, because there are there is foliage here. And you can see that when it added it, it automatically did something to the image. There's before, and there's after, before, after. Also, I could do a bef complete before, after, turning off all the filters with over here with compare. So click on compare, there's before, there's after, before, after. Also, you could do different types of... Uh, like a split screen preview type thing before after if you want to do something like that now I don't care for the way this filter has been applied um, it's a little bit overbearing but you can see how it's only affecting the foliage in the shot it's not affecting the sky at all uh, but we have different methods uh, we could try out a different method that was method one we'll hover over method two there's method three. I think I like method three a little better, and we're going to bring the enhanced foliage down a little bit. It's a little bit too radioactive. You can see it just kind of bring out that kind of the yellows a little bit. So I kind of like that. So we could keep adding filters. Now, when you add a bunch of filters, you're creating what Color Effects Pro 4 refers to a recipe. There's also some recipes that are built in if you would prefer to use a set of filters all at once. So we could go down here to this tab, Recipe, and you can see that there's a number of different re recipes. And you can see you get a preview of each recipe over here in the left-hand panel. And we could go through and look at them here. Let's just click on one, and you'll notice it will replace all the filters I have over here on the left with the recipes filters. So I'll click on foliage bump and you can see that it added a foliage filter, a cross processing filter, brilliance warmth filter, and a pro contrast filter. And that's the look it gave. Now you could come in and readjust these. You could remove them. You could add to them. And then once you do, you could create your own recipe if you want and save it. But let's just go through some of these recipes. Let's go to HDR like, see what that looks like. That is pretty much HDR like. Let's go to lavender. So you can see these these like totally different looks you're getting uh, with your image. Now I kind of like this one a little bit of a dreamy look. It's really not my style, but I kind of think it kind of I don't know adds something different I guess to the image. And you can see it used a film effects a nostalgic film effects filter, so it's got that kind of green film look. Dark and light and center, so it's got brighter in the middle. It's darker around the edges and another vignette to it. So you can see that that is that recipe uh, that has been added. And let's just go with this. So you get the idea. So we have recipes and filters, and you put a bunch of filters together, and you have a recipe. And you don't have to use the recipes. You could use the individual filters if you want. You, as you might have noticed when I first opened the image in it, all I, ever, all I did in the past was I added one filter, Detail Extractor. Uh, to the image uh, because I really like that filter. It's one of my favorite uh, here. So we'll click Save. And what it will do now, it will apply these uh, filters to that TIFF file. And then it will open that TIFF file up in Lightroom because I sent this over as a Lightroom plugin. And you could see that it will take a second to render uh, once it's here. But then once it does, you'll see that there's a before and after. taking a second to render. Oh, sometimes you'll get this. If you look over in the top right-hand corner, you could see that we have these like three lines in this up arrow. That means this is a Lightroom thing. Lightroom doesn't know which metadata to read, the metadata from the NIC collection or the existing metadata that was in Lightroom. So what you want to do is you click on this and then you write import settings from disk right here. Just click on that. And then you'll get the actual version that we just created in Color Effects Pro 4. That doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen once in a while. And I'm actually glad it happened so that I could show you how to make sure that you're getting the version you just created. So there's our original image. And this was the image that all I did was those four sliders. And there's our image from Color Effects Pro 4. So you can see that with all those filters, over 50 filters, you could have 
innumerable combinations that would give you just so many different looks and you could probably um, dial it into your style uh, that you like. And I think it's a, a pretty um, versatile um, plugin because it allows you to do so much. Uh, you could make your image look any way you want it to look and you could do any type of image from a landscape image to a portrait. So that's it, Color Effects Pro 4. Again, in the description below the video, I'll have links uh, to their website. Again, they have fully working free trial. You could check it out. I also have a discount code. If you decide to purchase it, you can save a few dollars. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.